Infinite we wanted to be absolutely world-class experience. I wanted it to be one of the best, best PC games available. But with Halo Infinite, this is the first time that we're releasing the game on console and PC the same day and date, which is super exciting. Importantly though, we're not just shipping a port of the console game on day one. We really are building it from the ground up to be a great game for PC players who love to customize the experience the way that they want to. We wanted to go out the gate like immediately with the best set of, of options that we could have in the settings menus from control options, graphics options, audio options, um, accessibility options. You can actually set like a minimum FPS. So you can say I want 60 to be my minimum FPS. You know, so you can choose, oh, I want it to run faster, but maybe not look quite as pretty, or like, no, give me the prettiest experience possible. I don't care about the frames, right? Ultrawide's really interesting because, you know, you, you hear it and you say, oh, you just need to make the, the, the frame wider and you're good. Well, actually, there's quite a lot that goes into it. We do what you could call horizontal plus. If you get a wider screen, you see more on the left and right, as opposed to less on the top and bottom. Some games don't do that for performance reasons. Ultra wide specifically does have challenges for sandbox. A lot of them were on our animators because all of a sudden, like, hey, I can see bits of Chief's shoulder where I never could see bits of Chief's shoulder before. When I came on board, a lot of the narrative sequences were, were built. And it was a really hard sell to go to those teams and say, hey, the tireless months you have put into creating these picturesque moments, we need them to go like that. The UI will have to fill the screen. Your HUD will have to fill the screen. If you're on a super ultra wide, you probably don't want your radar and your ammo count like way out on the corners. So we have the options so that you can bring them in. We have paid a lot of attention to uh, advanced graphics settings that you wouldn't normally see in a console game. A lot of them are sliders, so you can tune them down, you can tune them up, and then it's not just on and off. Because we went that far on PC, we were able to bring back a lot of those things on console that you maybe wouldn't always see in a console game. So in the same way that on mouse and keyboard, you can completely customize your key bindings. We have like triple key bindings. You can set up to three different keys to a single action. The, the teams have all worked together to bring a, a mega low latency experience. You need to make sure that you're set up to be able to deliver the lowest latency experience regardless of the configuration that, that someone's running. Our, our latency is some of the lowest in the industry. And uh, the reason our, our latency is as low as it is, is they built this cool thing. It's a mouse with like a little light on it. So that when you click the mouse, the LED flashes red. And then we use uh, high frame rate cameras to capture the, the game window and the mouse in the same frame, and then there we have true end-to-end -end latency. There's another first for Halo is launching across a family of consoles, and so how do we make our game scale down to Xbox One or a, a PC that's kind of equivalent to an Xbox One, but scale up to a Series X, and whatever PC someone has that's better than a Series X and the PCs in the future. We want the experience to be as interoperable as it possibly can be. So it should, you should be able to play how you want to play, whenever you want to play, on whichever platform you want to play, and it should work. When you're making a competitive game and it's on PC, you need anti-cheat. That's, that's all there is to it, it's gotta happen. We made a commitment early on that we don't want to have any complex DRM or anything that's gonna inhibit a player's ability to play the way they want to play. And we want to respect player's privacy, especially legitimate player's privacy, right? You know, we're gonna to continue to evolve it into whatever is necessary and uh, whatever our players need to have a fair experience. We're gonna be out the gate with crossplay between Steam, the Windows Store, all of the consoles, all of the Xbox consoles, it's amazing. If you're playing Infinite through Game Pass on your PC, your save will carry over into your console. And then, of course, multiplayer progression is shared across uh, all the platforms. You, you just log in wherever you are, and um, there's, your, there's your player, there's all your customization, there's your rank. I would say it's especially hard to balance a cross-play title, right? So you don't just need the feel of Halo, but you need the feel of Halo that translates well and is cross-playable between uh, PC and console. So there's been a lot of time and energy that have gone into that. You know, to try to make like controller and mouse and keyboard competitive with one another, it's hard. It, it kind of started to become clear, like the right thing to do is give them choice. 
we're going to have a ranked controller hopper. We're going to have a ranked mouse and keyboard hopper. And we will have a ranked crossplay hopper as well. We're doing something pretty awesome and infinite. On the PC side, you can actually deploy a LAN server and host your own uh, LAN parties. Both PC and console within your house can connect to this local dedicated server, especially for <laughs> folks my age that, you know, like grew up with original Halo, especially folks who grew up with LAN parties. I, I wanted desperately to, when this game launches, go have a LAN party with my friends. Instant nostalgia, right? Come on. <laughs> because we're a crossplay title, the way that we manage friends in the game is all through Xbox Live. And that is very common and familiar for Xbox players. It is not as common and familiar for PC players. Our integration with Steam, our integration with Discord, our integration with Xbox Live, those are a lot of moving pieces and it all works seamlessly together. Open game bar, message a friend, tell them to join, ping another friend on Discord, ping another friend on Steam pull all three of those people into a fire team and go play. Doesn't matter the platform. Working on Halo Infinite PC, we knew we had to partner with some of the best partners in the space. And to me, Razer has been S tier. Not only did we make an entire suite of fully licensed hardware, but on top of that, we wanted to make sure that everyone that already owns Razer hardware got to experience Halo Infinite. So the integration that we've been able to achieve directly with them and Chroma is something we're really proud of. Working closely with some awesome people at Razer and trying to describe to them what we want. So it's like, hey, so, you know, when the player dies, because we have like a Maybe the, this light goes bright and then flashes like and they, they took our weird hand motions and our weird sound effects and worked with us to make uh, a, a full set of lighting effects. They instantly were, were uh, like, oh, no problem, we got gotcha. you. AMD has been a really great partner to us. Um, they've been a great partner for both the feature set that they're trying to help bring to Halo Infinite and um, the optimizations that they've been implementing. A lot of the performance optimizations are actually applicable to console as well because AMD is in the consoles. They recognized, as well as we did, that console gaming's biggest franchise coming to an entirely new platform at launch was something that warranted a celebration. After much work and, and two years of collaboration, we're excited to unveil a limited edition Halo Infinite graphics card. This uses the AMD Radeon RX 6900 XT, and it's the fastest gaming graphics card AMD has ever developed. It's the perfect graphics card to celebrate the release of Halo Infinite on PC. While these graphics cards won't be going on sale, we wanted to make sure that there was multiple opportunities for fans to get their hands on one between now and launch. Make sure you follow Halo and AMD Radeon on social media for more information on how to enter and win. I'm really, really excited with what we've built. I'm really excited with the features that we have right out of the gate. I think when PC players sit down with our game, they're gonna go, okay, this is made by PC players. It's going to grow, it's going to evolve. We're gonna support it, we're gonna sustain it. Uh, we're gonna learn from our audience what they enjoy. We're gonna feed off of that and leverage that data and make decisions on what kind of content we deliver in the future. So it's really about uh, it being a living, shared experience between uh, us over in development and our community. I think as a PC developer, what gets us excited is knowing that we're gonna be on a journey with our, with our players on PC. That is, uh, their setup evolves, their hardware evolves, as they identify issues for us. It's gonna be a really lively conversation back and forth, and we'll continue to bring support to PC, PC players down the line as part of our seasonal experience. I think it's gonna be a fun journey for all of us.